This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at this example. It's another example of the allocation of a transaction price to the goods and the services. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to take it a little bit further in step five by actually recognizing the debits and credits and showing how things are presented within the financial statements. So we're really ratcheting it up towards the end. So here, what you've got in the requirement, you have a company that's entered into a contract on the 1st of July X7. We're asked to find out or demonstrate how that contract appears in the financial statements. So position statement performance statements for the year ended December X7. Now here, the background to the scenario is, is fairly similar to one of the earlier illustrations. Uh, so you've still got good old Livertech uh, selling computers. They also supply and install software and the technical support package is over two years. Okay. Uh, the business commonly sells the supply and installation and technical support in a combined goods and services contract. But we then need to identify the two performance obligations, which are, as you've got there, the software installation and the technical support. Uh, the combined contract is there at $1,600. So is that the transaction price? And then you've got the standalone prices of $1,500 and $500 for the supply and installation and technical support, respectively. Okay. We, re we need to be really careful here with the dates in the question. Because this contract that we've entered into with the customer is on the 1st of July. So that's with six months of the year left. That's going to be really important when it comes to allocating the revenue and recognising it when it comes to looking at the services over that six month period. Because we have a two year contract. So we need to recognise six months out of that two year period. It's gone a little bit too far. We'll get there in a moment. So, uh, your answer, fairly standard here. Identify the contract again, probably under the signed agreement, particularly if there is technical support involved. We'd have to agree to that and sign it on the dotted line. Uh, you've then got to go through and identify the performance obligation. So, we know that that's the installation service and the technical support. Uh, the transaction price is the combined price at 1600 and then you need to allocate it based alone along the standalone prices. So for the supply and installation, that's 1500 For the technical support, it's 500 So therefore, for the supply and installation, 1500 out of the total 2000 standalone prices gets allocated to the transaction price of 1600 So is that three quarters, which is $12,000. And then the technical support, its standalone price is 500. 500 out of the total standalone price of 2000 gets allocated to the 540. So is that the as 400? Now is where we need to pay particular attention to the dates. The installation is the sale of goods, so that is recognized on the date the installation happens. So here, assuming that the installation date and the date the contract is signed are the same. That's the 1st of July. So we're going to recognize 1,200 immediately. Uh, the technical support over the two years. That's the 1st of July. Is it there to the 30th of June X9? That's the two year period. Our issue here is that the reporting date is December X7. So how does that impact as well? What we've got here. Uh, is the statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss. Uh, in the profit or loss, we've got revenue. And in the statement of financial position, uh, you'll see shortly that there are going to be some deferred income balances. But the revenue, what you've got there is the goods at 1,200. Uh, and then what you've got, be careful with the services. The total services that we've allocated are $400. But be careful, 6 24 six months, two years, 24 months. 6 24 of the 400 
are recognised this year. So 1,300 in total. And I think 624 is a quarter. A quarter of 400 is 100, isn't it? Now, in terms of the entries, this is where it all begins. That was hard enough looking at the revenue. Uh, you're going to debit the bank or debit the receivable, depending upon whether you receive the cash or are expecting to receive the cash. We've credited the revenue with the 1,300. So, what's the other entry that we need to make? It's a credit entry, isn't it? The credit entry is there for 300. And that's deferred income. We've received the money. Uh, or we're expecting to receive the money. But the revenue isn't going to be recognised until that future accounting period. Okay, so... There'll be 12 months recognised next year and then six months recognised in the period after because we have 18 months left, don't we, Okay, on this 24-month contract. Six have gone and there's therefore 18 left. So that deferred income is a liability. If you're struggling within the exam on your published company accounts question, just throw a deferred income liability in at 300. If you're looking for prizes, then you need to split it. Split it between current and non-current. Current is what is due within 12 months. So within 12 months, is there 200 going to be recognised? Because 12 months is in the year. 24 months is the total length of the contract. 12, 24, half of the 400 is the 200. And if the total deferred income is 300, then the balancing figure is there as 100. Or alternatively, you could just say it's another 6 24ths of that 400. <sighs> that's more like it, isn't it? That's a proper question. That's really testing you out. Uh, so that could form part of a published company accounts question. It could form part of a series of multiple choice questions in section B. Or there could just be one multiple choice question in section A. And it might just say, I don't know, uh, what is the revenue to be recognised? within the year ended December 20x7. So as you can see, the key to these is to practice. If you didn't practice any questions by working through the study text before, you may have struggled with that question. Even if you've done the questions in the study text, you probably still struggled with that question. It's quite difficult. But the more you practice them, the easier it becomes.